11 Disciplines of Surveying in Construction and Civil Engineering There are different levels of surveyor. Your specialized area of surveying can be differentiated by the level of tertiary education, apprenticeship and training, while some areas require higher levels of education and might take you through the route of a. Student of Surveying b. Assistant Surveyor c. Technician Surveyor d. Graduate Surveying Programs, etc. And after you have gained some experiences, you can become a registered surveyor. Here are disciplines of surveying in construction and civil engineering. 1. Land surveyors, also known as cadastral surveying. Land surveyors plot, measure and record the details of lands. The details of these lands are sometimes recorded in the land registry. Surveyors measure just about anything. On the land. In the sky. Or on the ocean bed. They even measure polar ice caps. Land surveyors work in the office and in the field. In the field, they use dumpy level, automatic level, auto level, leveling staff, measuring tapes, ranging poles, etc. Land surveyors also use the latest technology such as high order, GPS, global positioning system, robotic total station, and aerial and terrestrial scanners to map an area, making computations and taking photos as evidence. In the office, land surveyors then use sophisticated software, such as AutoCAD to draft plans and map the on-site measurements. Land surveyors work on a diverse variety of projects, which means no two days are the same. Land surveyors are experts in determining land size and measurement. They also give advice and provide information to guide the work of engineers including architects and developers. Surveyors are the first people on any construction site, measuring and mapping the land. These primary measurements are then used by architects to understand and make the most of the unique landscape when designing, and engineers to plan structures accurately and safely, ensuring buildings not only fit with the landscape, but are able to be constructed. It is necessary to mark the boundaries on the ground, so that they are clear to observers standing on or near the property. Using a GPS system, a land surveyor can take accurate measurements from a large area of a land. With this technology, a single survey can do what used to take an entire team of people to accomplish. And they can complete the task in half the time, if not less. While GPS is used in a wide variety of industries, land surveyors were some of the first to take advantage of and realize the full potential of the technology. Land surveyors use existing maps to determine previous features around a land. Property boundaries are the basis for property transactions, including buying, selling, mortgaging and leasing. All the records of land properties, boundaries, previous owners, present owner, existing features, etc. are usually kept updated by land surveyors in the land registry of the local council. The datum point of lands are usually determined by land surveyors. This is a starting point, and a known reference point above the sea level to begin surveys and create maps. This value can be obtained from the local council if not known for a particular land. To enable the surveyor accomplish some certain mathematical tasks with respect to the land measurements. Land surveyors help in setting out of buildings using various technical equipment and methods. Land surveyors also read, utilize and interpret design drawings and topographic maps. Land surveyors equally use drone technology to their advantage. Using longitudes and latitudes, a land surveyor determines points and locations on lands. Next. 2. Quantity surveyors. Quantity surveyors are known in the industry as construction cost consultants or commercial managers. Their role is to keep a close eye on project finances and contractual relationships. They make sure that the financial position of construction projects are accurately reported and controlled effectively. They manage the contractual relationships between the various parties involved in any particular building project. Quantity surveyors estimate and control costs for large construction projects. They make sure that structures meet legal and quality standards. Quantity surveyors are involved at every stage of a project, whether they're working on residential, commercial or industrial projects. Clients rely on them to ensure that the final outcome is value for money. You can become a quantity surveyor with any of the relevant subject disciplines of quantity surveying, construction, structural engineering, 
civil engineering, maths, geography, economics, urban or land studies. If you already hold an unrelated first degree you could complete a postgraduate conversion course accredited by Chartered Surveyors or Chartered Institute of Building. This should be accredited by the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors RICS, and the Chartered Institute of Building CIOB. An apprenticeship route with a construction firm is a good way into the industry. Apprenticeships are open to anyone over the age of 16. You must have a strong maths knowledge. Quantity surveyor also undertake cost analysis for repair and maintenance project work. Assist in establishing a client's requirements and undertake feasibility studies. Perform risk, value management, and cost control. Advise on a procurement strategy. Next. 3. Marine, Ship Surveyors. A marine surveyor is a person who conducts inspections, surveys or examinations of marine vessels to assess monitor and report on their condition and the products on them, as well as inspects damage caused to both vessels and cargo. Marine surveyors also inspect equipment intended for new or existing vessels to ensure compliance with various standards or specifications. Marine surveys typically include the structure, machinery and equipment, navigational, safety, radio, etc., and general condition of a vessel and or cargo. It also includes judging materials on board and their condition. Marine surveyors are highly qualified and technically sound and are usually selected after thorough evaluation procedures as vessels ranging. From small ferries to enormous crude oil carriers and cruise liners are approved to sail into the high seas based purely on their judgment, competence and integrity. Marine surveying is often closely associated with marine insurance, damage and salvage, accident and fraud investigation as insurers generally lack the training and skills required to perform a detailed assessment of the condition of a vessel. There are very few institutions providing education and training in this specialist, but vitally important field. A diploma and MSc in marine surveying will be an added advantage. A long working knowledge of ships' electrical and mechanical systems. Fundamental understanding of boat design and construction. A marine surveyor may perform the following tasks. Conduct surveys throughout the ship's life, building new ship, annual survey, interim survey, special survey, to ensure standards are maintained. Perform inspections required by domestic statutes and international conventions by the International Maritime Organization, EMO. Witness tests and operation of emergency and safety machinery and equipment. Measure ships for tonnage and survey them for load line assignment. Attend court as an expert witness and assist in coroner's inquiries. Investigate marine accidents. Determine fair market value, damage repair costs, and replacement value. You can pause this video at any time to take notes. And if you are learning something here, Kelvin Academy. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Next. 4. Building Surveyors. A building surveyor is responsible for advising clients about the design, construction, maintenance, and repair of buildings. They survey buildings, and then report on their findings and make recommendations. A building surveyor role may include the following. Conduct surveys on land sites and properties. Examine previous records and evidence to ensure data accuracy. Research and design methods for survey processes. Use equipment and tools to accurately measure land features, e.g. longitudes, latitudes. Build maps, sketches, and charts. Carry out feasibility studies. A building surveyor may also perform the following tasks. Advise on the health and safety aspects of buildings. Advise on boundary and right to light disputes and party wall procedures. Prepare insurance assessments and claims. Negotiate dilapidations when there is a legal liability for a property state of disrepair. Assess and design buildings to meet the needs of people with disabilities. Advise on the management and supervision of maintenance of buildings. Instruct on the preservation and conservation of historic buildings. Determine the condition of existing buildings, identify and analyze defects, including proposals for repair. Prepare scheme designs with costings, programs for completion of projects and specification of works. Ensure projects are completed on budget and to schedule. Etc. Next. 5. Asbestos Surveyors. Asbestos surveyors inspect buildings and collect samples to determine the presence of asbestos. 
Asbestos is a mineral-based fiber, which was once widely used for insulation, but is now banned in some countries due to health risks. Asbestos surveyors carry out tests and may recommend professional removal of dangerous materials before renovations or demolitions are carried out. To become an asbestos surveyor, you could complete a college course, an apprenticeship, or on-the-job training. The role of an asbestos surveyor involves the following duties, safely inspecting for asbestos in ceilings, walls, boilers, and more. Understanding the health risks and uses and properties of different types of asbestos. Understanding building legislation relating to asbestos. Planning surveys and data collections. Analyzing plans and technical drawings. Completing risk assessments. Collecting samples for lab analysis. Compiling survey reports based on findings. Recommending appropriate remedial action if asbestos is found within a structure. Wearing specialist protective equipment including coveralls and a full face mask for site sampling. Safely disposing of contaminated items and samples. Working on industrial sites. In shops. And offices. And people's homes. Next. 6. Engineering surveyors, also called civil engineering surveyors. Engineering surveying is the broad term used to describe the work of surveyors in civil engineering projects. The role of an engineering surveyor is a lot larger than simply, setting out, for construction of a structure. And survey pickups. Engineering surveyors will usually be the professionals who first examine a finished design for a project. And often will identify any design or practicality issues. Engineering surveyors will use a wide range of instruments to assist them with their on-site work. The most common of these will be the Total Station GPS global positioning system, and dumpy level or digital level, automatic level, auto level, engineering surveyors engage in projects ranging from buildings, roads, dams, bridges, railway tracks, tunnels, and various forms of infrastructure. Subsequently, the engineer determines how much weight a bridge can hold. While the engineering surveyor provides input on precisely where the bridge footings, for example, should be located on the land. An engineer may be trained in a variety of different types of construction. From aeronautical to architectural and from mechanical to structural to electrical. Each type of engineer typically works on a particular type of construction project or is involved in a particular step of the project. No matter what type of construction project it is, the engineer will nearly always need to interact with a surveyor. The engineering surveyor is always called upon to survey the site before any construction or planning begins. The survey undertaken by the land surveyor provides the basis to advise the engineers on the optimum location for the structure. The engineer's drawings must take into account the actual lie on the land. The engineer cannot simply assume that the land in question is perfectly flat and devoid of obstructions. Throughout the entire construction process, engineering surveyors ensure that the engineering plan is being followed, often down to mere millimeters of deviance away from the plans drawn by the engineer. Conducting additional surveys throughout the process to make sure that the engineer's structural plan is properly aligned in the correct location when it is actually constructed on the land. These surveys, called, as built, or construction surveys, check the location of every part of the structure against the engineer's plans. On the construction site itself, rarely will the surveys be conducted by a single person. Even with today's technology, engineering projects usually require a team of surveyors to generate all of the distances and angles that need to be measured at a given site. This is particularly true as the project is being constructed, resulting in many more possible measurements than the site is vacant land. Wherever you find construction or an engineering project, you will invariably find at least one engineering surveyor, or more likely a team of them. Depending on the specific activities being undertaken at the site, the surveyors may be conducting a property survey, a construction survey, an as-built survey, a topographic survey, or any number of other survey types. Next. 7. Mining surveyors, also known as mineral surveyors. Minerals or mining surveyors are heavily involved in the preparation and processing of potential mineral sites. 
They conduct surveys to investigate the commercial potential of mining or quarrying. Assessing risk, predicting environmental impacts and mapping mineral deposits. Mining surveyors look at the economic viability of working on a potential site. And support planning applications. As well as help to negotiate legal contracts and establish rights to work a mine. Mining surveyors manage and develop the sites and map, and record the extent of mineral extraction. Once a site has been exhausted, mineral surveyors work with other professionals, including mining engineers and planning and development surveyors, to restore the land. Activities of a mining surveyor can include setting out of drill patterns, excavations and conveyors, locating underground roadways and voids, taking of measurements for volume calculations, monitoring of ground movement, land management and preparing statutory mine plans, Mineral surveyors are also involved with a huge variety of operations including peat workings, mineral processing plants, onshore oil and gas installations, methane extraction sites, mine water treatment plants, brickworks, concrete and cement works, waste transfer stations, recycling centers, waste incinerators, etc. A mineral surveyor tasks could further include Carrying out initial surveys, risk assessments and environmental impact assessments on potential sites to assess whether plans are workable. Providing advice on developing and managing mineral sites safely and within regulations. Exploring, mapping and developing sites for mineral extraction. Charting surface areas using global positioning systems GPS. Researching land and tax records to establish site ownership dealing with ownership rights and negotiating contracts to buy, lease or simply to provide access onto sites. Undertaking exploration work, such as taking samples and recording results. Providing valuations of mineral deposits. Giving advice on how best to restore the landscape after extraction is complete. Meeting with members of the public and providing information and advice to them as required. Liaising with local authorities and preparing planning applications for clients. Predicting the environmental effects and impacts of mining, including air pollution and destruction of the landscape. Developing pollution licenses. Providing advice on how waste material should be disposed of. Etc. A mineral surveyor work is both office-based and conducted on-site. Site visits and inspections are conducted outside in all weathers. Underground mine workings can be dark, damp and cramped at times. Surface workings can be dirty and are exposed to the weather. Mining equipment can also be noisy. There may be considerable travel within a working day. An absence from home overnight may be necessary, depending on site location. Graduates from a range of disciplines can enter mineral surveying. But most employers prefer candidates to have a related degree. Relevant subjects include Civil engineering or mining engineering Earth sciences Economics Geography Geology Surveying Next 8. Hydrographic, bathymetric, surveyors 70% of the Earth's surface is made up of water. Underwater environments are home to many natural resources. Plants and animal species and are also vital in moving people. Goods and services across the entire globe. Hydrographic surveyors are expert professionals who strive to make sure that marine resources and environments are maintained, explored and utilized in an ethical and sustainable manner. Essentially, hydrographic, bathymetric, surveyors profession involves collecting scientific data and mapping the underwater topography of oceanic and inland bodies of water. These scientific professionals use state-of-the-art hydrographic surveying equipment and innovative techniques in both commercial and non-commercial fields. The vital work of hydrographic surveying do helps in the plotting of charts, maps and routes for navigation purposes. The information that they collect is also useful for planning aquaculture projects, the construction of artificial harbors, ports and dock facilities and the exploration and extraction of minerals, ores, oil and gas. Hydrographic surveying is also an essential part of the planning process when it comes to laying and installing communications infrastructure, such as underwater and seabed cables, transmitters and sonar equipment, 
Furthermore, hydrographic studies facilitate marine research into ocean currents and the effect of climate change and industrialization on marine environments. Hydrographic surveyors are employed by commercial consultancies that offer cartography and surveying services. Academic research institutes and private companies in the mining, energy and construction industries. Defense organizations, for example, such as the United Kingdom Hydrographic Office, UKHO, and the Royal Navy. Also employ complete divisions of scientific professionals to work on marine-based activities, including hydrographic surveying. To break into this line of hydrographic surveying, a strong undergraduate degree is essential. Preferably in a subject such as mathematics, physics, computer science, statistics, operational research, geology, geography, cartography, surveying, marine sciences, civil engineering, environmental engineering, environmental geoscience or oceanography to really boost your chances of getting the hydrographic surveying job that you want. It may be advisable to do a relevant postgraduate degree in hydrographic surveying, geomatics or geographical information systems, GIS. Next. 9. Geodetic surveyors. Geodetic surveyors measure large areas of the Earth's surface using satellite observations, global navigation satellite systems, GNSS, light detection and ranging, litter, or related sources. Geodetic surveyors conduct surveys to determine exact positions, measurement of points, elevations, lines, areas, volumes, contours, or other features of land surfaces. Geodetic surveyors' measurements are used to track the movement of the continents, monitoring the sea level rise, earthquakes, and the tracking of satellites. Geodetic surveyors are involved in the development of coordinate systems and datums which are used in the production of maps and plans. Geodetic surveyors calculate the exact horizontal and vertical position of points on the Earth's surface. Geodetic surveyors provide training and interpretation in the use of methods or procedures for observing and checking controls for geodetic and plane coordinates. They request additional survey data when field collection errors occur, or engineering surveying specifications are not maintained. They also maintain databases of geodetic and related information including coordinate, descriptive, or quality assurance data. Geodetic surveyors compute, retrace, or adjust existing surveys of features such as highway alignments, property boundaries, utilities, control and other surveys to match the ground elevation dependent grids, geodetic grids, or property boundaries and to ensure accuracy and continuity of data used in engineering, surveying, or construction projects. Geodetic surveyors compute horizontal and vertical coordinates of control networks using direct leveling or other geodetic survey techniques such as triangulation, trilateration, and traversing to establish features of the Earth's surface. Geodetic surveyors determine orientation of tracts of land including position, boundaries, size, and shape. Using theodolites, electronic distance measuring equipment, satellite-based positioning equipment, land information systems or other geodetic survey equipment. Next. 10. Aerial, photogrammetry and remote sensing, surveyors. Aerial surveyors are commonly deployed when there is a demand for a detailed map or additional information to be collected about an area that is not visible from the ground. Traditionally, aerial surveys have been used by the mining industries but are also commonly used by environmental agencies and local councils to keep data on anything from land boundaries to numbers of trees, wildlife and insect populations. They can also be used for building purposes to survey proposed sites as well as for reconnaissance missions. An aerial survey is a method of collecting geomatics or other imagery from the air, either in an aeroplane, helicopter, hot air balloon, or an unmanned aerial vehicle. An aircraft piloted by remote control or on-board computers such as a drone, some other key responsibilities of aerial, photogrammetry and remote sensing surveyors are meeting the client's requirements from understanding the initial brief to submitting a report, liaising with pilots and planning a flight, checking equipment and using a mixture of technology to capture photographic evidence and other points of interest, interpreting collated photographs and data, analyzing and understanding patterns and relationships that are uncovered from the GIS, 
compiling reports that are accurate and combine visual, aerial photographic evidence as well as a comparison to old data and past photographic and mapping records. Aerial, photogrammetry and remote sensing, surveyors should be able to have field work experience of using survey techniques and operating aerial photographic equipment. Ideally, an aerial surveyors that have a working knowledge of GIS, litter, GPS and other technologies is highly sought after. Next. 11. Topographic, detailed, tachymetry, surveyors. Tachyometry from Greek word means for, quick measure. Natural features have different elevations, heights, locations and distances covered. For example, a city and its surroundings have trees, mountains, hills, slopes and different topography which are not on the same level, height or elevation. The differences in their elevations have to be determined. The ability to capture a large area with different land features and topography on a large scale can be performed by a topographic, detailed, tachymetry, surveyor. The horizontal and vertical positions of points on the Earth's surface relative to one another are determined without using a chain or tape, or a separate leveling instrument. A graduated tachyometer can be used for small-scale projects. The difference of height is computed from the angle of depression or elevation of a fixed point on the staff, and the horizontal distance already obtained. The azimuth angle is determined as formerly. The ordinary methods of surveying with a theodolite, chain, and leveling instrument are fairly satisfactory when the ground is relatively clear of obstructions and not very precipitous but it becomes extremely cumbersome when the ground is covered with bush or broken up by ravines. Location positions are also determined using GNSS. Topographic, detail, tachymetry, surveying are legally able to depict details of cadastral boundaries on detail plans. Only if they are registered land, cadastral, surveyors. I hope the information from this video was helpful. Please share this video with someone. Subscribe like and share, to receive more daily and weekly videos like this. This is. Construction. I will see you. In the next video lesson.